Joining us via Zoom is Catherine Haro, who is part of Changing Lives Australia. Welcome to The Informer, Catherine. Thanks for having me on the show, um, The Informer. I'm really excited to be here and to sort of share yeah. my insights. Well, I, I do want to hear your insights. I want to find out more about Changing Lives Australia. Uh, when did it start? How long have you been doing what you've been doing? And what is the mission statement? What drives you guys? So basically, Changing Lives Australia started in 2014. And it sort of originated um, out of my personal journey, but also the personal journey of my family um, originating from 1942. And um, that journey um, and the, the mission and the purpose of what I'm about and what our, my organisation is about is, is changing that culture around long-term systemic issues um, that it comes across our whole entire lives. So it's really about uh, raising that awareness and that consciousness but also giving people that voice, um, you know, to actually step up and be an advocate in those spaces um, where, you know, there's gaps, there's inefficiencies, and there's always change for improvement. When you say change, you're trying to change the way bureaucracies think, the way they behave, the way they carry out what they do, and the way they think. Is that what it's about? Yeah, so it's a, it's a pretty much a, a full approach around, you know, systemic challenges, policy, um, the way the narrative that we talk to people, perhaps people that have been institutionalised or homeless, people that may have experienced mental health issues or experienced, you know, um, some traumas in their life and how we actually deal with it right through from the engagement in schools to everyday person in community right through to government policy, both on a state and national level. Uh, you'd be, I would say you'd be very busy right now because all of those things you touched on are, are being affected and uh, seriously in great numbers. The mental health of uh, Australians right around the country is um, increasingly uh, uh, being described as uh, very challenging. People in Victoria at the moment seem like they're, uh, they're not hopeless, but they're, they're feeling a sense of helplessness. Have you sensed that in your, in your um, mantra and in your challenges uh, through uh, Changing Lives Australia? Yes, I have. And it's interesting because, you know, I sort of chair a, a suicide prevention network here in Perth. And um, one of the things that we've really observed is there's been a big shift um, in the way that we're actually dealing things. So people that were experiencing mental health issues, as an example, uh, anxiety, um, the whole COVID-19, for example, it's very normal to them. And we think people uh, that have not had any mental health experiences or presented to their local GP or to a clinician are now experiencing mental health issues as a result of what's actually happening. So, and it's not just adults, it's children um, and older adults. And so, you know, that narrative around what's actually occurring in community um, is going to have long-term effects. And, um, you know, from my own personal observations and sort of talking to our team, we could see that there were the narrative around, we talk about pandemic, well, we can see that there was going to be a pandemic of mental health issues and traumas as a result of what's going on. Can I just go back a moment? You touched on the fact that you're part of um, a committee or an organisation that addresses uh, suicide. <clears throat> Is this something we should be talking about more often? Should we, for a long, long time, it's been taboo. It's been part of the um, you know, I know as part of the media for a long, long time, we were encouraged very much to stay away from a, a suicide, report it very differently to the way we reported any other story. Is that still the right way to go about it? Or should we be more open, more direct, and helping people to understand that there's a massive challenge out there, and they, if you need assistance, you need help, reach out. Yeah. Look, I think you, you've hit the nail on the head there. You know, historically, um, the conversation around mental health issues was the elephant in the room, and even more so uh, in regards to suicide as well. So, you know, I do have personal journey around suicide, having been bereaved by suicide, experienced suicide ideation and thoughts, and also been a survivor. Um, of, of attempts um, from the age of 19 to 40. And I think, you know, when we talk about suicide, um, there's so much more that we can do um, as an individual, um, as a community, and also, uh, you know, within organisations and within government. There's always so much we can do. And I think removing the stigma and the shame 
is um, one of the biggest factors. Um, and actually having peers, people who have actually experienced or survived an attempt, come out and talk about their journey and talk about the recovery process and how we actually need to change the culture um, and the policy development in supporting these people right through from education system through to policing, through to the Australian Defence Forces, even out in community, because we carry so much shame and that shame is personal shame, um, you know, of ex the experience. And then we also have the shame of uh, families who, how do we talk about, you know, my loved one taking, attempting to take their life. We also have community shame and that community shame is that narrative of like, oh, how do I approach that person mm. or that family mm. that has actually lost someone to suicide mm. or knows that that person's got a family member that is actually having suicidal thoughts. And then I talk about professional shame. And those are the clinicians that perhaps um, are feeling challenged by supporting someone who may actually lose some, some of their clients, some of their patients to suicide. And then there's a the systemic democratic shame on an institutional level from a government perspective. Talking to Catherine Haro from Talking uh, or Changing Lives Australia, pardon me, we've been talking all right. Um, if, we want, <laughs> if people want to know more, Catherine, uh, how do they go about it? Um, they can reach out to me on LinkedIn, so they can follow me and connect with me on LinkedIn. They're more than welcome to um, co contact me on Facebook. Um, my website's currently be updated at the moment. And they can also connect with me through the Wanneroo Community Suicide Prevention Network. We're on LinkedIn and on Facebook as well. And they can contact me on my mobile 0407 382 643 if they want to talk to me about the work that I do in community. Uh, you know, I, I'm going to say this uh, uh, once, and I wish I, I couldn't, I, I wouldn't say it, but I think you're going to have an awful lot of people reaching out to you, because we have a number of problems, as you touched on, systemic and uh, stuff that's been around for an awful long time. We need to address it, need to get on top of it. Thank you very much for joining us on The Informer. Thank you for having me. Lovely. Take care.